Hi, Lucas Marquardt here with the Thoroughbred Daily News. We're at Phasing Tipton. We're just a few days ago at the July sale. Three Chimney Farms, Palace Malice, got off to a very strong start with his first yearlings. He had five go through the ring, four sold for six figures. They included two fillies that brought $275,000 and $250,000 apiece. We talked to Three Chimneys, Chris Baker, about Palace Malice, as well as about Fast Anna, another of the farm's freshman sires. You know, it was obviously a top cold of that, that three-year-old class, which was a strong group. And, you know, the, the curl and sire line is, uh, he kind of started putting it on the map and it's just built and gone from there with both Colts and Phillies. But, uh, you know, racing wise to be, you know, went Saratoga winner at two, classic winner at three, met mile winner at four, just a, an outstanding body of work. I think that, you know, the $20,000 fee, you know, was felt where we felt where he needed to be so we could stand by that fee, you know, through the first four years and see what his runners did. And, and breeders responded strongly to that. You know, his first several books were huge. I think he had like 250 or 275 mares bred in his first two books. Mares have come in shapes and sizes and pedigrees and, you know, oddly enough, I think that's a benefit, the diversity of, of, the, mare, uh, of the mare pool that he was bred to, I think, helps him a lot. And you'd expect some of that versatility in, up to and including turf as well in his offspring. So I think you know, anything can happen and, and uh, hopefully will. What you're consistently seeing are, are physicals that, that, that have that physical kind of durable, adaptable, balanced, athletic frame, maybe not as much, you know, mass as your average curling, a little, a little more size and a little, you know, height and a little, little cleaner in length like Palace Malice himself has. And, and they seem to have that kind of physical and mental toughness that he has that made him so good and such a, a durable and versatile racehorse. So he seems to have imparted his best qualities in his offspring. That's the uh, kind of the beauty of, of Fast Anna. It's a classic pedigree, a classic American distance on the sire side, and then some precocity and brilliance, you know, through, through Dreaming of Anna on the dam side. And then Fast Anna himself was just a fast, you know, brilliant horse. Combine that with his physical, not only he has the confirmation of a two-turn horse, he's got some length, he's got some stretch, the angles of his top line and his hind leg all look like a horse that would be fast and, and carry it, you know, and, and a beautiful horse on top of that, not just mechanically well-conformed, but an attractive horse as well. He had so much speed himself, I think it loans himself, loans itself to the two-year-old market, but I think, uh, like him, they'll look like they'll go on and do more, but I think he should be popular with pinhookers. Mm -hmm.